All right, Improvisation Center is back again with the 65. The 65 Mustang going on a truck frame. When we last left off, we were installing the powertrain on this thing, getting the motor mounts and the transmission mounts all squared away and getting everything nice and secured. Now that we got that all done, we can move on to actually getting this frame staged under the body and start doing what we got to do to make preparations to start putting the body down onto the frame. And of course that's going to involve doing some cutting and hacking and of course some welding later on. There's a lot of metal that's going to have to come out, old metal that is, where a lot of this new stuff here is going to be interfering and like in the case of the engine bay, we got the shock towers, the old bases where the motor mount brackets went and the control arms would have bolted to, all that stuff. A lot of this metal's got to come out. I even have to chop this little area right here, even, even though it'll be temporary, more than likely, in order to be able to get everything to clear. And there's like these little strut, uh, little strut brace things. I don't know what the hell they're called, but they got to come out too because it's just extra metal that's going to be in the way. And then even underneath, I'll have to see where I'm going to have to cut at the subframes in order to get the level I want on the body because I stated before, when I do get the body on here, I have to make sure that the height of the body at the top right there does not undershoot the top of this engine. Like, I'm literally going to have to have that top of that body about that high off the top of this uh, engine here so the carburetor and everything will clear. Otherwise, we may be forced to actually mount this body a little higher than usual, making this thing look more like a truck car kind of deal. But needless to say, got to start doing some cutting, preliminary cutting, so I can start getting this in here. Let's get started. first batch of metal hacked out of here those little strut brace pieces whatever the hell they're called are gone even from underneath all that metal is gone it is right here I did cut out this center section right here even temporarily more than likely I probably won't put it back in here I'll just put a piece of angle iron in there for extra strength because that metal is pretty rusted any damn way but now with that, I can start rolling this thing up under here some more, but at the same time, I'm going to have to figure out another bracing situation because that board is in the way. So we're going to start working our way under docking this thing. to uh, remove the front board I got the front of the car supported on the engine crane had to add this little short piece of 2x4 to help brace the bottom here to keep it from warping any more than it already is 
The next thing, well, I also got the frame pushed under the car at about our staging point I want it to be at. Next order of business is going to be removing these shock towers and all the associated pieces of metal that are in the way. And of course, we're going to be doing a lot more cutting in order to get that out of there. I have to exercise caution doing this though because obviously the more metal I cut out of here, the more rigidity I remove from this front end. And the last thing we need is for this whole thing to just buckle under our weight and collapse. So I'm going to probably, if I, if I do anything, I'm probably going to put these drums underneath these points right here. Looks like it might be sturdy enough to hold up everything. I'll have to lift this thing up a little bit more. And then I could go ahead and possibly slide these drums under there and use those as anchor points. Hopefully it all holds good because I should not have to move the frame anymore at this point. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that real quick and then we go ahead and start cutting. Got the shock tower cut out on the left side as i stated before i used the drums underneath this structural member right there to hold the body up so our crane is no longer holding it and went ahead and just hacked the hell out of this area and got the whole shock tower completely out so all we're left with is just what's left of this frame rail right here got to do the same thing on that side then i could go ahead and start lowering this thing down a little bit now this will be interesting because well the idea that as soon as i put any tension on that bar right there for the crane all this shit's gonna probably warp like a son of a bitch so i'm gonna have to just kind of take my time observe what everything does and be ready to pull back if it looks like it's about to go awry but one thing I would say is with all the metal that I'm removing from out of here, this front end's probably going to be that much lighter where I might be able to move a lot of this by hand. Who knows? We'll see. But still got to get the other shock tower out. Go ahead and get that done. And then we're going to go ahead and start looking at how we're going to start lowering the front of this body down. Stand by. right shock tower hacked out also took the time to whittle away at this extra metal from where the shock tower body was welded to the subframe same thing on that side in order to help smooth all this out as much as possible so when I do put some angle iron and flat stock on here it won't be sticking out as badly so with all that done my next move I actually thought about was taking some sheet metal and welding it in these openings to cover them up and I got some scrap sheet metal right here with which to use to cover these holes up 
I cover these holes with this sheet metal. Once I get that done, then my next move is going to be to actually put our old fenders back on. So for one, I can kind of get an idea of where everything is sitting and eventually start putting some metal in there too, but use the fenders to help work as a gauge and everything as far as all this jagged metal right here that's misshapen even on the top on that side got to kind of straighten it out a little bit I mean it's all warped and crappy looking but yeah little by little we could start putting this together start putting in our new metal and our new used metal so we could start revamping this whole setup in order to get it ready to go on the frame also have a uh, tarp over our engine right now because it's been raining on and off quite a bit and last thing we need is to wreck an engine because of rain so and also to keep dust and shit from out of there while I'm grinding so yep next move I'm gonna start cutting some panels to go over these holes so let's do that all right Thought I'd spare you the boredom of watching me cut and grind a piece of uh, washing machine or dryer door to make a patch for the shock tower hole, but we got one done right here. I also took the time to grind all the undercoating and other trash from around the area inside and out so it'll be ready for welding. Same thing with that piece right there. This piece here will be used to make another patch on that piece of metal right there to hit that side next. And of course I got to grind the edges on that side as well to get it ready for welding too. But uh, got that. And then this piece of metal I got to straighten out right here. Because I'll probably end up using that to do a little patch right here because this is all separated. Got to get that put back together. And then probably do another one for that side for reinforcement. So keep on grinding and cutting. All right. We got our shock tower delete patch panels cut, ground down, prepped up and ready to go. Same thing there. All ready to weld up. Going to go ahead and do some little spot welds around these things and then just go ahead and fill them in on each side so we can get these fully in. Then we can start working on actually trying to get some uh, patching on the frame rails as well as along the top right here so time to burn
All right, we got our shock tower delete patch panels welded in. Got it done on both sides. Got a bead around the front and got a bead around the back on the inside. Same thing on that side right there. Got them both done. Almost complete because we still got the little area up there we got to patch up as well as the frame rails down there we have to add some metal to. But that main section that we chopped out is all patched up right now. So again, my next move will be cutting the metal to go up here on both sides so we can reinforce that little section. I'll probably put that metal underneath if I do anything since the fender has to go on top of here and have an extra metal up here. We'll just distort that fitment of the fender on there and in turn distort how the hood fits so yeah metal will go under there i'll probably also have to drill some holes to take into account these mounting points for the fender bolts so yeah we'll get that done as well and of course i'll have to source some angle iron flat stock so i could get to work on these subframes so the work continues panel put in underneath this flap right here attached to the top of the shock tower mount same thing on the other side got it all welded in everything is nice and secure so with that all said and done we can now start turning our attention to these subframes these rotted rusted crappy subframes especially that side right there that side there is horrible but uh yeah got some more metal that i bought and or gathered up from the scrap pile so we could start doing some cutting and fitting and welding and more of the same thing so time to get to work some more try to get this whole front end area wrapped up if possible let's do it okay took a second well several and cut me a bunch of little patches out of some rigid pieces of sheet metal I still have some down here that came from the scrap pile I don't know these were like shelving pieces but took the shelving pieces scrap cut several little patches to go on our openings on the frame rails all around inside and out and same thing on this frame here got the pieces I need cut for it now even though I have these pieces on the bottoms of both subframes there's some large openings and just areas where the metal rusted away pretty good and the only reason I didn't put any patches there yet is because once we get through with these patches that we currently have I have to do the core support and then after we get through with the core support then we're actually going to start working on getting the body lowered down onto the frame we're not going to mount it but we're just going to set the body on the frame and then get a good idea of where we need to cut on the rear portion of the subframes where they angle down so we can try to match the contours of the truck frame and have everything as even as possible so we don't have any huge gaps between the bottom of the car's unibody frame subframe rails and the top of the Ranger frame itself. So with all that said and done, after we get this all taken care of, we're going to go ahead and get some crane action in. Because once we get the front end lowered down onto the frame, we're actually going to move the crane to the back and get that one off the drum and board and start lowering that down some too since we're gonna have to level everything off and at the same time 
we're going to also have to take a moment to put our fenders back on because, well, we're going to need the fenders on to get a good idea of the ride height on the body relative to the wheels on the truck frame. So, yeah, we got a good amount of stuff in front of us here. Get this all said and done, and we can go ahead and move on to the crane. done like I said got our frame patches all in even on the bottom here I started a patch I didn't finish it because like I said I'm probably gonna have to cut at an angle that's gonna take us to about that point on the subframe and probably have us eliminating the rest of that subframe for that lower couple of inches in order to match the contour of the truck frame so my goal is to hopefully get the bottom of this subframe resting on the truck frame. Don't know, we will see though. But I also put our fenders back on in order to help us engaging everything as we place all this garbage down. Also got the inside taken care of on the patching and all. So, oh and even this too. I put this cross piece for the core support back in and then just welded a piece of angle iron in there because I didn't want to just waste a whole long piece of angle iron trying to span that gap and besides this metal here is pretty crappy anyway so this is really just to kind of keep this whole thing spread apart more so than provide any real support so with that all done I'm gonna go ahead and start lifting this boom up so I can get these drums from under here and we can actually start lowering this thing onto the truck frame. Okay, starting to lower the body down, and when we actually have a first-hand eye on how everything is lining up, well, gross miscalculation would probably be an understatement. Now, while it's not really that big of a deal, it's enough so that I'm going to have to rethink some of the stuff that I've done so far on our subframes. Why do you ask? Well, let's look right here we can see get a better angle right there our little shock tower setup right here actually interferes with the placement of this subframe straight down on the thing on the front on the truck frame right here now 
same thing as on the other side the spacing is not perfectly the same between the truck frame and the subframe so it's not like we could just manipulate anything width wise now what that will also mean is to get this body down more I'm basically going to have to cut some of this subframe out basically all the crap we welded in except for the stuff at the top would have to come out now looking at that if I do like follow the contours here and just start chopping along the top here I'll be able I should be able to get enough of this out where I could go ahead and get the thing down low enough so these shock towers can clear all this up here because you can see we probably got about f three four inches between the bottom here and the truck frame here so that means we're literally going to have to come up here we may very well have to chop out a lot of this material here and come very close well really we're not going to come very close we're, we're going to be at that top piece of flat stock right there and what that'll end up meaning is I will probably have to put some type of mount here that will space everything appropriately now there is a light at the end of the tunnel here looking at where we're sitting at and looking at where our engine is sitting at we have room to spare as far as clearance between the top of the engine and the top of the engine bay this thing can go down a whole nother foot before we even need to worry about clearance between the tops of the two so that's at least a good thing that tells me this thing can come down quite a bit more which means if we look at everything here if we take out that section of subframe there depending on how everything looks that'll get us about right there on the fenders that means this thing's still going to be riding high what it also means is we may very well be hacking a lot more out after all and that'll also mean adding metal in places around this engine bay to strengthen everything up after we've essentially destroyed the whole structural integrity of the front end again now what that also means is I'm going to also have to exercise caution because as I start cutting shit out of here, I don't want to end up putting myself in a compromising situation where everything is just going to go on itself. So, yeah, it's a minor setback. But again, my terminology, shooting from the hip, comes into effect here. We are indeed shooting from the hip and we're going to be continuing to shoot from the hip and see if we hit something before we run out of bullets so next thing is going to be well cut more crap out even the stuff that i welded in today that's how it goes sometimes you'll spend a bunch of time doing something and then find out that everything you did was essentially for nothing but in the end i can't look at it that way it wasn't really for nothing more so than it was just a learning experience of what else will be involved in making both of these two bodies join together in unison so the work is continuing and we're going to get this thing put together one way or another we're not going to try to go for a super sketch super rednecky off-road monster truck look we're going to try to get this thing down as far as possible by hook or crook so yep that's what we're doing right now.
All right, we were doing a lot of hacking and test fitting. I probably had this thing up in the air about three times so far and cut out stuff about that many times. And this is where I'm currently standing, where I chopped out a sizable amount of the front two thirds of the subframe and our fitting is better, but there's still room for improvement because we're currently sitting on the truck frame right there at that point where this last bit, if we could see it right there, is kind of making minute contact, enough so that I can't go down anymore. So I already marked the area that I need to cut out on this side and the other side. And on this side here, it isn't making contact. Same thing on the other side. Another area of question that I'm going to have to focus on is where the shock is actually at. I might have to lop a little bit of metal away from this area right here, mainly because, as you can see, the stud here for this shock is making contact with this remaining metal right here from the old subframe. So it's really a little bit more whittling that has to get done because, well, we can't have stuff just rubbing up against anything unnecessarily. On the other side here, same thing, like I say, look at this, it's clear for the most part. Might have a little bit of metal over there I could knock out just to help get extra clearance, but same thing right here. This area is making contact, and I marked what I want to take out to get that clearance. Same thing right here. We got an issue with the stud for the shock right here, rubbing this metal right here. But I also have an issue with this brake line right here. I have to knock out that at the same time so we can get the extra clearance to get this thing down some more because when you look at it in its current state so you get to where there's no glare from the sun here when you look at it we still have some height here on the body we got about a good foot distance between the fender arch and the top of the tire now it's not ridiculous but it's still high so if I could like I said if I could close this gap as much as possible I'll be happy and even in the engine base same thing the height issue is not an issue in the engine bay there's more than enough room for the carburetor and an air cleaner to clear all that stuff is good. We, we're not even going to worry about the engine. Hell, the engine is open enough that I could get in here and work on this thing as needed. I have a pair of short tube headers as well that I want to install on here. And I'll probably be able to get those to clear just the same. Because they're actually some short tube headers from a Fox Body GT. They should be able to clear enough so that I can get a piece of pipe welded onto them if I can't find any bolt-on flange pipe and then be able to clear the frame rail going down there and all. So I'm not going to be able to put no regular Mustang headers on there. The only other option from there would be to put some stock manifolds, which I do have, put those on there and then just weld some pipe on there at the angles necessary to allow the crap to clear. Now for all intents and purposes, exhaust doesn't even weigh in when it comes to fitting this body because the engine's already in the frame. It wouldn't matter if I put a Ranger body on this thing as far as the exhaust, so we're not going to worry about that. But uh, our main thing is trying to just get this last bit of metal out of here so we can get this body down as far as possible and make sure everything else is clear so we can move our engine crane from the front and go to the back. Now before I actually do that, once I'm finally done with cutting the frame out, 
I could go ahead and weld some metal on the bottom of the open points on the subframe to close all that all that in those little box sections of subframe I want to close it all back in and then move on to welding some type of mount of some sort I have to figure that part out too and obviously you'll see that when I get to it but uh and some bushings I also got to figure out an uh solution for our bushings on the tabs on the front of the ranger frame but like I say once we got our uh cutting and last cutting and fitting done we can move on to the advanced or final stages of our fitment of the front of the body on the frame so we can move to the back and try to get that done because obviously getting the back done all depends on how we get the front done all right we pretty much hacked out about everything we can from the subframe before we actually would have started cutting into the top portion I thought about it and figured that it's probably not a good idea to continue cutting into that and cutting that out because all structural integrity would be gone one number two that point right there where those ta that tab is at on both sides we wouldn't have a good solid spot to attach any kind of body anchor that would mean having to weld up some type of tubular frame to be able to be a load bearing point to attach to that little mount on both sides and then of course there's just the idea of pretty much killing the structural integrity of the whole front end so we're gonna roll with it right here the issue that we have as to why we can't get any lower is because the top of the subframe the top portion of the tube steel that this was made of is resting on top of this shock tower now even though it looks like it that point right there is not resting on anything the angle will have it look like it but it is not everything is resting right here on the shock tower and what I'll end up having to do is when I make whatever kind of mounting apparatus to secure these points on both sides I will probably end up raising this up just a fraction of an inch just to take that contact off of the shock tower not really much distance but enough that we're not resting on that right there we'll be resting on the mounting point now like I say you can look at the ride height here and see that yeah it's still kind of high now one thing I would say these tires are car tires right here if I were to put regular Ranger or tires that would typically go on a Ranger it might look a little better and then if for any other reason I could put larger truck tires of course we'll be getting into the monster trucky off-roady look at that point but we're probably gonna end up going into that territory anyway whether we want to or not it's just a matter of how far into that territory we get but you can see on the front here these points right here where they're just about making contact with the frame now one thing I will be looking at when I start assembling the body in the front here is whether any of this shit has to come off because I have to look at how I'm gonna do my whole front clip and that includes the bumper seeing if I might have to weld up some type of brackets or something for the bumper or if I'll still be able to attach all that to this existing body because the whole plan is to make the whole front clip try to be one piece for all intents that includes even attaching to the bumpers maybe I have to see how all that garbage fits back together it's kind of a complex little puzzle of garbage that goes together but again I have to make mounts for these two tabs I also have to jack this back up one more time so I could box in the open points on the subframe so I can wrap up the subframe that way we can move on to actually doing our mounts I had to disconnect the brake line here by the way because in the process of fitting everything that brake line had to come free from this mounting point right here otherwise the brake line would have been crushed and our little shock tower stud right there is clear same on both on the other side it's clear 
would still be able to get that loose if need be because it'll just be a matter of putting a wrench on there and of course the shock comes straight down so that should not be a problem and that point right there is not making contact either we're making contact on top of the shock tower so same thing on this side applies as is on the right side we still have our decent clearance here in the engine bay so that won't be a problem either and even our steering situation right here may not be as big of a deal as I would have thought it now one thing I did think about is the idea of mounting everything because of the distance that we're looking at I might be able to just get away with opening that hole up a little bit and moving the steering column just a smidge over to the right so we can have a straight line to the steering shaft instead of trying to work with different little knuckles and all to make all that work as is like I say we're just shooting from the hip throwing stuff together but we're gonna make it all work but I'm getting way too ahead of myself we still got to get this front end straightened out so let's do that thought about something I'm still gonna have to cut a little bit more metal out of one area and that is at this point right here this area has to come down more a little bit more to the back why because of the idea that when we start lowering the rear of the body down especially after we anchor the front point down there that point right there is gonna actually come down lower till it just about makes contact if not make contact with that point on the ranger frame and when that happens my attempts to try to further lower that body are going to do one of two things or both it's either going to make this thing act like a fulcrum on a lever and try to make the front raise up a little bit raise up a little bit there which can very well compromise any mounting crap that i weld down there to secure it right there or it's going to further cause this body to buckle in the center or at some point between this point and back so I'm basically going to have to cut along here. I already drew a line. That much metal's got to come out so we can have more than enough of a gap when we do lower the rear down so that little seesaw lever effect won't occur. And of course, as part of the other thing that we still have to do is box in the rest of that subframe and that's where this garbage comes into effect. I pre-welded a couple of uh, bars right there out of the scrap metal I have so I could go ahead and weld that in place there and fill in that area and then of course I'll have to do the same thing there and box that little area in well this area in particular needs to be reinforced because it's pretty rusted out and all but I need to build those areas up so I could go ahead and start adding our mounts or mounting body mount brackets which are probably going to be homemade anyway to those points to attach the front end so right now we're chopping out the front of the, the rear of the subframe get that out of the way and we're mounting or not mounting we're welding in this metal here to fill in the box channels or whatever the hell you call those subframe I call it like box metal whatever because they're kind of like boxes I'm sure there's some other terminology but uh yeah get that out of the way so we can go ahead and lower the body down hopefully for the last time onto the frame prior to making our body mounts and all so go ahead and continue on with this stuff get this out of the way and move on forward all right we got our metal welded in place along these frame rails what's left of them after I chopped them down on the left side there you can see due to the rot I couldn't exactly get a complete weld one might say why not add some more patching to that well not really 
100% necessary, just given the idea that that's no longer going to be a structural member. All the structural integrity is going to be in the rest of the body and floor and everything. Our structural integrity for the chassis is, well, a frame. Also right here, welded some more little pieces of metal in place in order to strengthen those areas up. Same thing on that side. Got that strengthened up a little bit with some extra metal. So now, with that all said and done, I should be able to lower this thing down so we can at least be able to say that we are actually just about done on the front end here. Doing this one handed, so bear with me. There we are. And quick little check there, I gotta shift it over. There we go. quick check right here looks pretty good on that side you can see on the front how it's sitting pretty good on that side as well we're pretty much down all around take another quick peek over here Still making some minor contact on the shock tower right there. We're no longer making contact over there on the on that little pivot point right there I mentioned. So with that all said and done, I can probably start looking at doing our mounting apparatus. We can start doing all that crap now, making the uh, body mount tabs. So we can go ahead and start wrapping up this front end. I'm probably going to have to come back over a lot of this stuff after the body is completely mounted. So I could see where I can put some uh, extra reinforcement. Because I'm probably not going to go with just these two points here and then the other areas along the length of the frame. So the main thing is just getting these main points. I think it's like six or eight of them. Getting those established first and then... We can go ahead and add more metal after the fact. But for all intents and purposes, we're down. Our crane is no longer on the front end. You can see also where our ride height stands tire-wise, as well as our engine bay. It's not bad, not too horrifying, still not perfect. Because if you look next to this Mustang here, <laughs> that son of a bitch is high as hell. But, kind of cool though if you really think about it. But, yeah. I'm going to probably do a couple more little once-overs on this front end here. Before I start doing some crap on there. But in the meantime, I might move the crane. I don't know yet. We'll see. A little extra thing I decided to do to help in the uh, cushioning of the body on the frame. Was add a couple pieces of cut rad hose along this top sub the uh, top of the subframe here where it sits right over the range of frame shock towers i just slid it in half wrapped it around the flat surface right there and attached it with a self-tapping screw and when it lowers down that rad hose will be between the body and the shock tower not a major major concern but it'll help lessen some of the metal on metal contact as we can clearly see we got the body on the frame here and our little piece of rubber hose is right between it sandwiched as intended so yeah just a little something that I thought I'd add just to help in mounting the body kind of like a body mount bushing so still got to figure out what I got to do with this probably gonna have to get some large half inch bolts to use in part of our mounting apparatus on here 
So we'll figure that out as well. Stand by. Okay, what I came up with as part of our reinforcement and mounting practice that we're gonna do here, I'm gonna get a couple of long half inch bolts and they're gonna be welded along this side piece right here. And I'm gonna to have to cut a notch right here for the bolt, the stud to pass through into this bracket right here. In the meantime, I'm also gonna weld the top of the bolt inside this piece of angle iron. I ended up cutting a groove right here through the side panel of the subframe to where this piece of angle iron passes through and over. So this will be welded all right here as well. And it'll be welded along this area on top of the subframe. Same thing right here. I did the same thing, cut a groove through the side to the top of the subframe, cut a piece of angle iron, passed it through to there, so it'll be all welded up right there. And it'll be welded up right here. And then like I say, I'll cut a groove right there for the bolt to pass on through to our bracket here. And then all this will be welded in. So we'll have a nice little extra bit of meat on the bone for reinforcing this area right here. Like I say, this is not gonna be the only mounting point. I mean, maybe in the very, very front, this will be the only mounting point, but we'll probably end up having to add some extra metal at some point. Hell, I'll probably even add something somewhere midways through here that's kind of more attaching to the frame as well because we want to be able to have enough strength on this thing so when this frame does do its little twisting and all, it'll be able to withstand those forces and not just rip itself apart so we're welding all this together here and getting these bolts secured and I got some salvaged rubber that I'm going to use as bushings in our body mounts on the Ranger frame that the half inch bolts will be passing through and We'll be securing all that so once we get that done we can for all intents and purposes consider the front end mounted allowing us to move our crane to the back so we can start getting the back situated just as well and be able to get to the point where we can officially say the car body is mounted on the ranger frame so go ahead and finish that up now Alright, we are done with our initial mountings on the front of the subframe of the body here. As you've seen, I welded some half inch bolts in place uh, and a piece of angle iron. Welded all that stuff together inside and out. Bolt extends through down there. I also welded a large washer over the body mount bracket so the bolt will be able to fit right in there and not shift around. And I took this thick ass rubber that I had and made more or less a giant cushion for it, drilled a hole through it so the bolt stud could go through it. And then I took another piece of rubber and put it on the other end, on the other end of the subframe inside the engine bay so it'll add some extra cushioning. Same thing on the left side here. But on the left side, I actually had to cut the first bolt I welded in place because it was off quite a bit from the body bracket and I welded a second bolt 
almost next to it, filled it in pretty good with weld and slag and have it at a lower position as well because it was probably a good inch and a half or so too high where I would have barely been able to get a nut and bolt, I mean a nut and washer underneath there. So now with this setup, it's all secured. The bolts lined up with the hole, got a washer in there just as well. And I've got the rubber in place as a cushion as well as on the inside. See the same thing right there. So we're not even on the boom either. So the front for all intents and purposes is done. Now I can also do some extra crap later on if I desire by adding something to this metal here that might come around here. I mean, I'll figure it out later on after I get the rear done and the body is technically on the frame where I don't have to worry about jacking the thing up and down, up and down. But I mean, I could do something where I make a piece of metal that it attaches under here via another nut and extends out and comes up and attaches here just to act as another form of attachment to the body so any movement this thing ain't gonna just pop free in any way but like I said the front is officially done so we can now move our crane to the rear end and get started back there All right, the body is lowered down. As we could see, the crane is not on here either. The body is actually being supported by whatever metal underneath there. You can see right there, there's a point right there on the top of the shock tower in the back, the same thing on this side, holding this thing. Now what that means is we still got some work to do on this. That means doing some hacking in that rear floor section right there to get rid of that metal so we can get this rear down more because if you see right here where these rear subframes are at right here, like this follows down there to where the torque boxes used to be, but these rear subframes have a good like eight inches six to eight inches give or take between them and the truck frame a lot of gap a lot of space try to get rid of that because if we stand back and look at the body let me zoom back out we can see that the ass end is at a higher point than the front is so we got some room to work with as far as lowering the back down to get an even level surface a level plane on the body so it at least doesn't look too too hiked up but <laughs> as you can see it's hiked up even if i get all that taken care of as far as getting the body down this sucker's going to be hiked up in the air i mean it's we're pretty much in truck car territory like i say if you look at this mustang here and that mustang there it's a night and day difference but it's actually kind of cool if you really look at it because it leaves the door open to all kinds of modifications for this thing but yeah like I say we're gonna have to do some hacking inside here this time like I say those points right there around where the old shock tower shit is at we're gonna have to cut all in there of course that also means that we're gonna have to do some fabrication for the seat mounts as well because a lot of this is where the back seats would typically bolt that but that was pretty much going to be expected we were going to have to do all kinds of modifications in here anyway especially since all this metal here is crap well just the center section is still salvageable but torque box areas gone these inner areas where the rocker panels are at gone so 
we're gonna have to weld a bunch of metal in there and then probably do some fitting and fabricating of some brackets to fit the interior panels and back seat and all that crap so let's go from what I seen after looking at the right angle that contact point we have on the Ranger frame especially with the shock tower because the way the shocks are oriented on the Ranger frame they kind of crisscross each other as far as uh, well the right shock actually mounts about right here the left shock actually mounts towards the back but the frame is still the top of the frame is still at the same level which is about right here so I have to chop out this little area right here in order to open the area up so the body will sit down a little bit lower same thing on that side there so we'll go ahead start chopping initial cuts that I did make were nowhere near enough as you could clearly see because <laughs> I cut the shit out of this floor here I had to cut in all different angles to meet the uh, different spots of the Ranger frame here as you could see like we got a cross member there cross member there I had to cut into the floor into the old drive shaft hump to get around all that I got around the initial point right there where it was hitting first on the high point of the rear section of the Ranger frame and the shock right there. Same thing over there. Had to cut a good chunk out to be able to fit around that section of frame rail. So all this right here, even this little portion right here where the seats normally mount at, I had to cut a little chunk out of there on both sides. Even in the rear here, I had to cut out some of the trunk floor hole where you would normally put the gas tank i cut all that out and besides this area here was pretty rusted out anyway so it was gonna have to come out anyway because there's no good metal to weld to there but i cut all that out cut around there and the trunk area right now is resting right on the ranger frame as you can see here so with that in mind I could literally just put a, p a patch of sheet metal across here. Hell, I could put another cross member across here for rigidity in the trunk floor and then just lay a piece of sheet metal over the top and just leave a little access hole there for the shock right there, as well as put a piece of sheet metal across there. But for all intents and purposes, we are down about as far as we could realistically go on the body because otherwise, one, I'll have to cut more of this trunk floor out as well as cut some more out in these areas. Now that might happen. Have to take a quick look, see if I could maybe whittle a little more metal out. Because there's other little points where we could probably take some more metal out, like right there. Uh, probably whittle a little more metal away right there around that cross member. Because right now, what we're aiming for, we're trying to get every half an inch we can the, the farther down we can go the lower this thing will ride and the more we'll be able to get this distance closed up because when you first seen it there was like a good six to eight inch gap right there now we're literally at probably two to eight uh, two to three inches right now of a gap between the subframe right here and the ranger frame so like i say every little bit counts at this point so if we could get down a little bit more we could get this thing leveled off hell i'm probably going to put a level on here just to see where we stand so do a little more 
playing around on this thing. Try to get to a final position on here. All right. I did a little more whittling away in different spots around there, but really can't go too much farther for a couple reasons. One, if we look at it, we're pretty much level. Now, it might not be an accurate assessment as to whether the ground is level or that rocker panel hasn't distorted it in any way to distort the levelness of the overall car, but if we stand back, let me zoom back out of here. If we stand back and look at the body, we can pretty much see that the body is indeed level. It's pretty much at the same height all the way across. It's not too high in the back, not too high in the front. So we're going to be satisfied with that level. Now, another reason that we really can't do anything, see if I can get a good angle here. Oh, God. If we look underneath here, let me see. Uh, well, to make a long story short, the outer shock tower metal where the old Mustang shocks would have bolted up to is touching the frame. Okay, like right there where the Ranger shock is at, a little ways behind that, at the highest point on the Ranger frame there, the old Mustang shock towers are on top of the Ranger frame right there. Meaning, if I wanted to go any lower, I would have to raise this thing way back up and hack that metal out, and that's a pain in the ass. And besides, we really don't have to because, well, the car is level. It's high, but it's level. I mean, we don't have to cut out any more in the trunk either, because we already did that. Took out enough metal in the cab area. So with all that said and done, we could actually start looking at how we're gonna, well, <laughs> patch this floor up and try to get some securing of the body at the rear to the mounts so we can finish up this whole mounting process because we do have a couple mountain points right here, right there and there. And there's a couple body mount brackets on the very rear, similar to the ones in the front. Now, more than likely, I might have to do some kind of similar crap back there like I did on the front with the uh, half inch bolts and everything to secure all that, as well as using some of the rubber that we have for cushioning. But as far as right here, with these mounts, not sure what the hell I'm going to do with that because other than taking these rubber bushings out, taking those out and then just using the bracket that itself and maybe welding some angle iron across that, I don't know, I have to figure all that out because with the way all this looks, we're really not going to be using the stock floor pans as it is. I mean, I have some replacement floor pans. They're really for, one of them is for this point right here, and the other two are supposed to be for in the front right there. Still have to figure out how the hell those things fit, but I don't have any kind of replacement sheet metal for the rear section. I just have scrap sheet metal, so we'll be using scrap sheet metal in the process of actually closing all this in. So it's really another shoot from the hip situation at this stage because... I could do whatever I really want in here. Now, before I mentioned that getting the back seat in here may very well be a problem because of the amount of metal that we hacked out of here as well as some of the points where the seats would otherwise be anchored at, a lot of that is gone. So what that may very well mean in the worst worst case scenario is we might not have a back seat in this thing. But hey, We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We still have to get the body in this thing first before we can go any farther with worrying about interior and crap. So we'll go ahead and start visiting the rear mounts, the rear most mounts, so we can get that end situated before we continue with those mounts right there. And to finish it all up, I even have a couple of mountain brackets right there, one on each side. These might be easier to work with because I could do a similar thing to this that I did to the front with the bolts and all that and some angle iron and crap. So, like I say, let's go ahead and get this crap finalized and on this frame so we can write this phase of the project off. Well, got a, some kind of a plan as far as mounting the rearmost point of the body to the frame. 
this is the trunk area right here that we're looking at see the panel all that I ended up making a angle iron brace of some sort that I welded some half inch bolts to and have them lined up with the holes on the frame itself where everything can go through and I'll go inside here so I get this thing out it's just a simple piece of angle iron that I welded up in order to go into these holes here that I drilled over the holes on the frame so I'm gonna weld that in place but I'm also gonna have to weld an extra piece of flat stock across that to mate up to this seam right here on the back panel so it could be reinforced and all because this sheet metal here and here this is all pretty thin metal and the frame rails back here ain't exactly hitting on anything as far as strength and rigidity so I'm gonna have to go ahead and add metal as much as I can in these areas here in order to be able to solidly mount the the back of the body onto the frame here now another question you might have is well looks like you're on metal on metal back here yeah that is true and that's gonna be where our simple crude idea of using rubber hose around the frame rails where it makes metal on metal contact is going to come into play along with the uh, rubber the thick rubber pieces for these bolts at the backs of the frames here so we can go ahead and at least get a good amount of cushioning along this back quarter of the car so this area won't be metal on metal action so like i say we're welding everything in get it all mounted down get the rubber in place and we can technically consider the body mounted even though i still have the intermediate mounts in the cab the two the two mounts in the cab and the two mounts right under the firewall that are outside of the cab to address and those are i'm not going to say they're not important they're definitely important but they're just we don't have to go through as much effort since they are where they're at. The only worst case scenario might be me having to weld some extra angle iron in the cab to accommodate some type of mounting point for those mounts in the cab. So go ahead and get all this crap welded up and we're going to wrap up this mounting job so we can actually move on to building us a car now. All right. We're pretty much done with the back mounting. <clears throat> As you can see, we welded in the piece of angle iron with the bolts welded to it. Also welded a bunch of extra metal along the back of the angle iron to mate up to this back panel right here. So all that is nice and solid. This is all welded to either side. So we're taking advantage of the structural support on either side. And then under here, we got our bolts here with some rubber it's not really doing a complete sandwiching job but it's enough to keep this metal here off of the frame and it's all secured nut washers everything and then the other contact point so we get under here right there on both sides left and right that contact point there is cushioned by another piece of thinner rubber I don't know if you can see we could zoom in right there. It's another piece of rubber right there, sandwiching the frame at that point as well. So with that all said and done in the back, we still gotta cut these out on both sides so we could start putting some crap together there, which is really gonna be more of a uh, patching up the floor and we're just gonna kinda kill two birds with one stone when we patch the floor and everything. We'll go ahead and put a bolt through there. So we're not even gonna worry about that on this segment because it ain't gonna really be a, a body mount in the traditional sense. We're not gonna use no rubber. This is gonna almost be a direct metal on metal bolt point. One of the points where it will be metal on metal together to help hold the body stationary because what I'm probably gonna end up doing, given the fact that this drive shaft hump is higher than where the drive shaft is actually gonna go, I can actually 
cut a notch all the way through there and put a long piece of angle iron from one side to the other and use that as an anchor point to hold both sides of the body at the rocker panels to these body mount points. So like I say, that'll be in the next segment. And then even this point right here, I could put a, I could make up a little bracket set up with some angle iron and a bolt, but I'll probably try to put a piece of rubber in there. I got a couple pieces of rubber left, but I'll have to be careful because since the body is down, the rubber is going to have to be on the bolt after I weld it onto the bracket and then I'm going to have to weld the bracket to that point right there and try not to burn up the rubber, but it'll really be just more of a attachment point than an actual structural support point like our front end is here. So we're going to go ahead and consider our mounting completed for all intents because as you can see the crane is off and we already did some jumping around on this thing bouncing around and stuff so it's supported it's ready to rock and roll everything else is going to be more on the patching up side so till the next time as usual Hit the like button, subscribe, notifications, starting to put some crap on Instagram as well, starting with this project here by the way. So stay tuned for more work on this car right here. I will catch you later as it's starting to rain. I'm out.